Blessed assurance, Jesus, this morning. I would have bought it for glory to the one. Blessed this morning I'm just going to pray uh, brother Albert uh, the boys yep the boys okay yep. cool. okay let's just pray uh, Heavenly Father we just thank you this morning that you're moving amongst us we thank you Lord that you're watching over us Heavenly Father we just thank you for protecting our brother Tony oh God realizing uh, the situation could have been far worse than what he came out with Lord and I just believe that you're 
hand is upon his life, oh God, as it is on all of us, Heavenly Father. We just thank you, Lord, for your protection upon us, Lord, in this uh, very sinful and dark hour that we're living in, Lord. But we know we're walking in the light as you're in the light this morning, Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you for the light, Lord Jesus. Just thank you for the safe arrival of little Caleb this morning, Heavenly Father. And just thank you, Lord, that your hand is upon his life this morning. And Lord, just moving in uh, the situation of Sister Anne's daughter, oh God, and Lord, her feeling that her daughter's calling was to be a nurse. And Lord, here she is. She's graduated to be a nurse. And we just thank you, Lord, for that also, Lord. You, you're mindful of all these situations. And we, we just thank you, Lord. And we just also pray for the Ruig boys this morning, Heavenly Father. We lift them up before your throne of mercy, oh God, this morning. We know our words can't change anything, but one word from you can change your life forever, oh God. So we just pray for the Holy Spirit, Lord, to move in their lives. Lord, send the word in due season, oh God, and turn them around, Heavenly Father. Lord, we just lift them up before your throne of mercy and pray for mercy this morning, oh God. We just thank you, Lord, that we can come to you this morning with all our burdens lord that are upon our hearts lord and lord just for unspoken needs this morning i believe there's many heavenly father and we just pray that you would minister to those also for we ask these things in jesus name amen i've got a couple more songs here this morning let's maybe stand and sing a few more here sweep over my soul that's the next song we're gonna get there amen
we can bring it up in a jiffy. And uh, uh, he is an old. together and uh, just want to say one thing before we sing one more song we sing into thy presence we come or I come it's very important that we come into his presence that we are willing to come and look to the Lord I went to a church in in Chicago which um, was not what I was used to but uh, a man just read a chapter in the Bible and talked a little bit and didn't actually say much I thought oh he could have said this he could have said that but when he was through I got almost an inspiration in every verse he read so it didn't depend on the person to tell me his revelation if the Lord gives it to us and I was very blessed should we sing into thy presence I come in I presence we come. which happened while I was away I mean it was all exciting say it this way it started even 
when I went down to Wellington the ferry crossing. Um, I put the very comfortable clothes on and I looked quite rough, I thought. So I was sitting up there and then an older couple came and she wanted to lie down and, and have a snooze and he started talking. Are you, where are you going? I said, um, near Christchurch. He said, oh, we're going to Blenheim. And yeah, he started talking and then he said, well, are you on business? I said, uh, well, not really, you know, not that kind of business. And uh, he said, oh, what are you doing? I said, well, visit some friend, family and friends. And he kept on asking, what are you doing? And then I said, well, I give it to him. I said, well, if you really want to know what I'm doing, Sunday morning, I'm going to be preaching in a church in Christchurch. And I thought, man, he, he's going to say something. But he said, I knew you were a preacher. <laughs> and I said, I don't really look like one being in this scruffy clothes. He said, but God sees the heart. He said, and they had a wonderful fellowship for three whole hours on the boat. And interesting enough, he, I think he was a preacher himself of some sort. But anyway, his brother, he said he has a brother lived in, in Tauranga. And then he showed me the piece, his name and things. And uh, somehow I recognized the name. And I said, oh, does your brother have a, a son? He said, oh, yes, he's got two. He says, is one a bit slowish speech-wise? And I, he said, yeah, yeah, both of them. And then uh, I said, is his name Miles? He said, yes. So his brother, son, came to our fellowship the last two meetings before I left. <laughs> you know, these are not coincidences. And then you can say more things and uh, we don't know how the Lord ministers but many many things happened uh, which you cannot arrange yourself and I uh, was very blessed I like to read uh, Matthew 24 verse 35 where Jesus said heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away and that is a very, very important one we can rely on, hang on to, because there's so many other words in this world, opinions, discoveries so-called, and everything else which could deviate from what the Lord said, it's all wrong. People rely on other people's words, it's all wrong. Uh, just somebody said, oh, people think I'm a nice guy. People think I'm so good and they all like me. So what? What about the Lord? Are we walking before the Lord or before man? It's, that's the only thing that counts. It doesn't matter if people think uh, you're silly or you're this or you're that because you're not up with what they believe. It has nothing to do with it. I walk before the Lord. I stand before the Lord. I give an account to the Lord. And I just want to encourage you to... Walk with the Lord in harmony. I call it in harmony with God. Yes. We need to have a harmony uh, with God. So we know that he expressed himself in, in his word. That's the word of God. So we weigh up and compare everything with the word of God. Because the word will be the only thing that will remain. There's nothing else. So we need to weigh up things against the word of God whatever it is whatever comes our way we believe it and we believe it to be God's program the finished work of God written in the word if anything could be contrary to that word it could not be of God or God's plan it is God's program so we can rely on this word just try to encourage you uh, in this now the Spirit of God in the Word makes the Word live itself, act itself out. It brings the Word to life like a seed. God and mankind were in perfect harmony at the beginning in the Garden of Eden. Now you think about that one. They had the Word of God in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, from the mouth of God that lips of God directly to their ear. Mm -hmm. 
They communicated. They were in harmony. God came and fellowshiped with them. And there was a harmony and the communication because they were on the same basis. They had a direct connection because there was no sin. There was no sin. We know sin stopped the connection. That's why Christ came. We know, we know that because we cannot walk in harmony with God if we are not, say it, equally yoked. <laughs> if we are not of the same spirit. So the whole universe and nature is to be in harmony. I, I listened to, um, it's quite interesting, um, they have discovered that certain sounds and certain frequencies uh, are good for the body and for whatever, or, or certain sounds are the natural sounds and natural frequency, and certain frequencies uh, are disturbing. I don't know if you ever read that, but in one uh, public place or shopping center or somewhere, they had a lot of crime and violence and things. And then they start to play classical music over the speakers and it stopped. You, I remember when I was a young teenager, they had these Rolling Stones come to Zurich and you know, they gave a concert and after the concert, everybody picked up the chairs and smashed the chairs. Hundreds of chairs, oh, smashing and violence, because that was the music that actually did that. There was no harmony with God. You see, we some of them don't realize we, we exposed to all sorts of frequencies, so-called. We have to tune in with God, and then we can have a harmony. See, I've got a quote here I'd like to read to you. Any man and his family, a correct, good, noble, obedient family is one with another, any family. And if there is something in the family that moves them apart, then it's not right. The family is broken somewhere. They should all be one father with mother, mother with father, children with parent, parent with children, all in agreement. And when you see that, you'll see one lovely picture. That's God's purpose, a harmony. And His purpose as Father Supreme was to be one with His family, earthly family, Adam and Eve. And the only way that they could be one with the family or with God was because God's nature was in them. You see, God's nature was in them at the beginning. So that made them with God's nature in them, then with each other and God. They become all one. Isn't that a beautiful picture? God in his family, Father over all, supreme, no death, no sorrow, no headaches, no nothing, just joy unspeakable. Never to be sick, never to have a headache, just one with God. We know that's this oneness with God. Uh, we know this oneness with God was interrupted. You see, it was interrupted. You know, our harmony with God can also be interrupted. It can be interrupted by all sorts of things. By people who give us a hard time, by by heartaches, uh, seeing people doing the wrong thing, and all oh, this harmony can be interrupted. But we know Christ is the answer. We know that. And as this interruption, which was through sin, was dealt with on Calvary, so can any interruption in our life to be dealt with when we look to Calvary. I believe that. You know, sin resulted, it interrupted the harmony. Uh, the, the result of sin interrupted the harmony. Communication and love relationship with God. It was broken. You know, when, when sin came in, Adam and Eve, they hid from God instead of coming into the presence of God. You know, they hid from God because there was something was interrupted. 
sin. And the Bible says if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just yeah. to forgive us. And we can step right back into that wonderful presence of God if we ever slip back because of the blood that's still there on the mercy seat. You know, uh, I don't like to share that story, but it stayed with me many, many years ago. I met this man, uh, well, in the army, in, in Switzerland, in the army, sometimes when one became a corporal or an officer, it's gone in their head and they started to mistreat people and speak to them in all sorts of ways, make them do things. Uh, I, I know, just give you an example how, how bad it can get. They had to climb up a, 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 a pole and one was a bit chubby and he couldn't quite make it, he kept on slipping back. If the officer went, put the bayonet there, you know. <laughs> you, you know, so he basically stabbed and got into trouble for it. But you know, they were very bad. But one thing that stayed with me, it was a very wet night, pouring down like anything, and one had to stand guard in front of the house. The whole night, standing guard practicing standing guard and it was pouring down but you know the, the houses over there some of the farm have a great big eaves I mean maybe two three meters going out there so he could stand under here in the dry standing guard now the officer came and said step up one meter forward in the rain he had to stand in the rain but you see can say the devil can cause you to be in the rain but it only takes one step back you're in the dry again only one step sometimes it's one step in the right direction and you're right back where yeah, you should yeah, be right. one step that, that really stayed with me so you can be in misery in misery but one step and you're back under cover so that that's really really nice to know so God still wants us to be in perfect harmony with Him and all of His children. That's what He wants. Perfect harmony. And you know what splits or causes disharmony? It's, it's really a lack of walking with God. A lack of taking His Word as the absolute in our lives. Some people can take one word and make it the absolute and everybody who does not just get around that one word is cast out we have to look at the whole counsel of God and see the whole word is in harmony as well so we take something out and, and lift something else up we may be out of harmony with the word so that is why he sent Jesus Christ to reconcile the world back to himself. That brings back this harmony with God. You know, there's harmony in nature. That there's absolute harmony in nature. And if everything would would be obedient, say this way, there would be a perfect harmony everywhere. But that's not mankind normally. So if we are of harmony out of their peace, out of, it's just, just think it's one step in the right direction. I read you a scripture in Romans 5 verse 10. I've got it in the Amplified Bible. It says, for if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, it is much more certain having been reconciled, that we will be saved from the consequences of sin by His life. That is, we will be saved because Christ lives today. Isn't that wonderful? That's for us, these scriptures. I'd like to give you another scripture. John 17, 1-10. 
when Jesus, before he was crucified, you listen what he said. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast seen. Whoa, that's very clear, isn't it? I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now... O oh, Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Isn't that interesting? I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me. And they have kept thy word. Now they have known all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Read it again. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Mm -hmm. And you see, when we hear Jesus Christ, we know that's the word of God. Amen. You see, that's, that's where sometimes people make this difference. Yeah, you know, he was just a man. No, he was deity. Amen. So um, he says, And they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee. And they have believed that thou didst send me. Now, verse 9, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me. Amen. For they are my, uh, thine. Yeah. And all mine are thine. And thine are mine. And I am glorified in them. What wonderful words. Like I said, you know, I don't need to explain a lot. The Lord can minister to you. You don't need me to explain things. He can minister to you out of these words. So what a union. What a oneness. That would be to see God in his church till every member is just perfectly in harmony with each other and God. That's the church that Jesus is coming for. That's when his prayer will be answered. That we will be one. Not one in, one in spirit. One in love. One in Christ Jesus. I mean, it's a whole other sermon to talk about uh, the church itself. You know, the church is built upon revelation. That's the church of God. It's built upon revelation. There's the two things. There's the, the knowledge. And there's the revelation. And the church of God is built upon revelation. So perfect harmony with each other and with God. How can we have perfect harmony if we are all so different? to uh, write the creed and recite it and say, if you believe this, recite it, then you're part of us. Some churches do that. They have uh, a, a statement. They call it the Apostle Creed or, or all sorts of things. But you don't need that. Or I believe in a Holy Catholic Church or whatever. They, they have these creeds, but that is not the oneness. That's right. You have one big denomination at the end, but that is not the oneness God's looking for. He's looking to those who have His Spirit. And I said the other day, when we have His Spirit, we are part of Him. If we have the Holy Ghost, we are part of Him. And we can walk in perfect harmony with Him. We have the ability to walk in perfect harmony because we perceive and receive what the Spirit saith, you know, the natural man cannot receive what the Spirit saith, but the spiritual man can. Mm -hmm. 
So we have an ear to hear what the Spirit says. So we are in that place. But when we have the Holy Ghost, and I can tell you that with an honest uh, <laughs> heart, when I first got the Holy Ghost, I acted quite differently to a few years later. And things I've done partially were out of zealousness, religious zealousness, and out of, uh, well, call it the flesh, you know. You, you fight for it, you do things, you, you lift people up and run others down, and you do all sorts in your own strength. And then you grow up a little bit, and, you know, people, people say, uh, with, wisdom comes as age. Not automatically, I'll tell you that much. Amen. Somebody asked me the other day, hey, Dad, isn't it true that we're all born with character, with a character? I said, no, we are all born with a personality. But character is a victory. That's right. When we have battled and overcome the battles, it builds character. Amen. See, if, if, if we don't fight the, according to the word, it doesn't build character. Yeah. It builds ignorance and arrogance and all sorts of other things and self-righteousness. Yeah. But if it's by the word, it builds character. And if it's by the word, we have overcoming to do. But that builds character in you. That brings you into that oneness, even with one that does not necessarily see it the same way. Have you seen something today or you see something today you haven't seen 20 years ago or 10 years ago probably right. have you changed your mind in anything over the last or well, some of us can say 40 years <laughs> uh, yes certainly the, because the word never changed it hasn't changed but our attitude towards it has changed mm -hmm. and our maturity level has changed it's not that the word is different. We become more Christ-like. That's yeah, what it is. Right. And I find it's, it's wonderful when we can see that others are on the same journey. A, a, a young man of, say, 17 years of age or 21 or 2 is not the same as a man that is 50 because he hasn't had his 30 years of experience. But he can still receive the very same thing. <laughs> a child can receive the same things of the spirit as an adult can. You know, it doesn't depend on age. But maturity does come o o o o over time. When we ch young in the Lord, children sometimes do childish things. And sometimes uh, people never grow out of childhood. But you see, we are on different levels sometimes. But we don't unify on the level we are at. We unify in the spirit and love one another despite whatever th there is. Love is what keeps us together. And that's what Jesus prayed. See, perfectly in harmony with each other and God. Just like when the woman unites with her husband, that's from some quotes I read there. It is a vow until death. Now, then, when you unite with God, it's the same thing that the church united with Christ. It's until death we part. We're not one, one day a Christian, not the next. If somebody says, are you still a Christian? I find that's the dumbest question ever. <laughs> you know, if you ever a true Christian, you sealed with the Holy Ghost until the day of redemption. It does not change or alter. You hear from people, I heard that when I was in Christchurch, I was actually a little bit disappointed, you know. Oh, all the missionary work people did and provided books and provided things and, and, and uh, oh, he doesn't walk with the Lord anymore and he doesn't serve and he walked away from it. And that was the people some churches supported. They never had the Holy Ghost. They had the head full of knowledge and thought they knew more than the rest. 
and they turned against other denominations, not realizing they were one themselves. What is it? It's not the Holy Ghost. Because if you have the Holy Ghost, you seal till the day of redemption. And you serve the Lord and praise the Lord and worship God. Whether you make mistakes or not, you're one of His. Amen. It doesn't change. That's why the unity is the Holy Ghost. Sure, the Bible says we aim to come into the unity of understanding as well. You know, we don't want to be ignorant. But you see, too much emphasis on unity of, we see it this way or see it that way. If we, if we have different opinions here and just go by the opinion, we probably have a half a dozen churches tomorrow, <laughs> you know. But we have a unity in the spirit. And, and uh, I find it's quite important to be united with him in spirit, in the spirit of his power is eternal life. You're eternally united with God. United eternally with the eternal God, perfectly in harmony with him. Perfectly united together, a church that all, both God and his church, is one, united together. See, to be back in perfect harmony with God, we need God's Spirit in us. That's all it is. We need that Spirit. We cannot have perfect harmony otherwise. The example in the Bible often makes a, a parallel to husband and wife and Christ and the bride. I, I said the other day to somebody, I said, oh, no, my wife, we haven't got the same hobbies. She wouldn't want to get near my motorbikes. She wouldn't want to come on a boat. She wouldn't, she isn't interested in those things. And now I said, oh, I, I wouldn't want to go and sit in, uh, behind a sewing machine or I don't even like doing dishes, to be honest. You know, and we're quite different, quite different. But why do we get on so well together? Love is the uniting factor. So you don't have to have the same hobbies. You have to have love for one another. It's not the same opinion. You have to have love for one another. Go in the same direction, worshiping God and giving Him all the glory and praise He deserves. To be back in perfect harmony with God, we need the Spirit of God in us. That's what it is. The Spirit of God cannot dwell in sinful flesh. It's a very basic uh, gospel message. That's why Christ had to come. We know the story. Man tried to cover their sin with good works and sacrifices. Mm. We can go throughout the history and Bible, right at the beginning, it was the same, Cain and Abel. Well, first, first was the fig leaf, the fig leaves, and we still have fig leaf religions, you know, plenty of them. People try to find their own covering. And then there was the blood of bulls and goats, and even that could only temporarily cover sin but he could not take away sin. But the blood of Jesus Christ takes away the sin of the world. So the only thing that can take away sin is the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what it is. John 1.29 says, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. That's the one that could take away sin. Any other sacrifice could cover the sin. And then the sinner went out and just started sinning afresh, mm. straight away. Once the blood is applied, the Holy Spirit can come and dwell in us. Because we have a clean house. That's where he can, in a sanctified building. You know, when did the Lord come down in the temple Solomon built? You know, that's another interesting story. You know, Solomon didn't get the design of the temple. David did. He had the revelation, and Solomon, by obedience, did what was in David's heart to build it. David wasn't able to build it because he had blood on his hands.
But when that temple was finished according to the heavenly pattern, what God wanted, and they were all there in one accord. The Holy Ghost came in in such a powerful way. Nobody could speak. They couldn't even minister because he was pleased to dwell there. In the holiest of holies, we know in the tabernacle, when everything was in place as God showed the pattern to Moses, when everything was where it should be, God dwelt there over the mercy seat. You know, if they would have taken, oh, no, that doesn't matter. The, the, we don't need the Aaron's rod in there, or we don't know, need this. And I don't think God would have dwelt in there. You see, it had to be perfectly according to God's word and will. And he revealed it to Moses. And the Almighty God can reveal to us personally what he wants done with his word in your life. That's right. He can do that personally. That's a wonderful thing. It's not a plan that fits all. It's an individual plan we have that, that all looks to the, the big picture, the big plan. But we all have a role to play. Once the blood is applied, the Holy Spirit can come and dwell in us, enabling us to be in perfect harmony with God again. Perfect harmony. I just want to mention this. When a orchestra plays a symphony and is in harmony, it's actually beautiful to listen to. Everything comes in at the right time and all these things. But if it's out of step anywhere, it, it's no good. Even if you have all the instruments and all the noise, it's not good. Have you ever heard uh, people making mistakes when they play music? It just does something, eh? It does. <laughs> so I used to play the guitar, and then suddenly I was speeding it up and slowing down again. I just couldn't keep the rhythm. You know, that's uh, that sort of stopped the harmony a little bit. Then there was somebody with a good voice trying to sing to my playing, and I messed it up constantly. No harmony between the two. When people sing. I think that's another one. When people sing a song, two people, they can harmonize. When they harmonize, they don't sing the same tune. One sings it one way, and the other another way, but it harmonizes. You see, that's the harmony. It's not necessarily uh, getting a voice or getting... It's being in tune with God, God's Spirit. And it's beautiful when there is a harmony. It's absolutely beautiful. In Luke 24, 49, And behold, I sent the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. That's the promise of the Holy Ghost. To get us back into this harmony with Almighty God. You know, the disciples... When they walked with Jesus without the Holy Ghost, but they had something in them that made them hear the voice of God, but they didn't have the Holy Ghost, which came at Pentecost. They did not always walk in harmony with Him. They even told Him off. Jesus said, Who touched me? And they rebuked Him. Come on, look, there's so many people, of course. Anybody touches you, you know? It was the woman <coughs> with the blood issue yeah. had faith and touched him. And virtue came from, went out from him. They weren't in harmony. They didn't even know what was going on. They were on a boat and, and fearing for their lives. And Jesus had a rest. And he said, you little faith. <laughs> of little. They weren't in harmony. He told them that, that the Son of Man will be taken by the Pharisees and they have him, have him uh, scorched and, and crucified but the third day he will rise again that's what he told them more than once did they believe it? not a single one was at, at the sepulchre the third day waiting for the resurrection not a single one 
They weren't there. They weren't there with spices to anoint the dead, you know. You see, they have not had the spirit to actually perceive what, what he was saying. But after Pentecost, everything changed. Acts 2, 1 to 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Praise God, that's what happened. But they did not give up until that happened because they believed the promise of God. It's any promise of God. If we don't see it happen straight away, we still believe it. Upon the day it will happen. I don't know if you if ever come, uh, come across this uh, testimony. These uh, two neighbors were prayed for at the prayer meeting and it was Brother Branham who, who had a vision seeing them healed and says you are healed in the name of Jesus Christ they went home I think one had a tumor and the other one had a, something in a tummy or whatever it was but struggling you know they were still struggling because they were still sick and still had these things but they believed they were healed and you know, it was at the same time, both got healed three months later. But they were already healed, but then it was manifested. Yes, yes. Never give up. Just believe, believe and hang on to the promises of God. See, reconciled to God, filled with His Spirit, we have perfect harmony. Now, each one of us who's got the Holy Ghost, doesn't mean we can step out of that harmony. We have to... We have the ability to be in harmony with God. It takes two to harmonize. But we have the ability because we can perceive what the Spirit says. And the Bible says in Romans, in the Amplified, sons of God, and also daughters of God, of course, are those who allow the Spirit to lead them. So we need to allow them. Having the Spirit is one thing. But allowing him to lead us to be obedient to him as I said we all can trip up it's a possibility backsliding is, is you, in a sense we backslide every day but you know it's one step and you're on, on the cover again <laughs> like that rain one step only one step one prayer one prayer say Lord I'm sorry I repent of this Please forgive me, cover me with your blood, and let your Holy Spirit control me. One step, and you're right back with this, in the perfect harmony with God. Yes, right. You know, when you're in the harmony with God, you also start to feel and know His presence. I, I sometimes when I drive, when I'm traveling, um, I pray or, and, and say things, and, and suddenly presence of God is there and I know he is there I know he is there it's nothing more more wonderful that's when you in harmony I must have just prayed according to his will according to what he wants to have done or he lays something on your heart or a person I heard something wonderful last night it really touched me this preacher was saying Satan fears the grandmothers their prayers for the children and grandchildren. Satan fears grandmothers. Yeah, I believe so. Because they are praying earnestly and prayer does something. Perfect harmony. Sons and daughters of God, the bride of Christ. We've heard the cry. You know what this cry was? Behold the bridegroom cometh. We've heard the cry. Here we are going out to meet him here we are going out to meet him 
You don't meet him in 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 in, in, in the dumps. You meet him in his word. I want to finish with a chapter here, or part of it, uh, from Colossians 1, 9. I start there. For this cause, we, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled listen, with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding so you have personally a, a harmony with God that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness I like to um, repeat this verse 11. That's the prayer of Paul. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. What for? Unto all patience and long suffering mm -hmm. with joyfulness. Mm -hmm. You know, patience and long suffering is not always nice. You know, you be patient and this. It still doesn't, you know, they still don't get it, you know. Yet you, you we try to be patient. And long-suffering, you know, long-suffering is what the word says. You suffer a long time. But how? With joyfulness. Because you're in the will of God and you know you're fulfilling it. And you're in harmony with God and you can have joy even when you're persecuted or whatever happens. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. What a word. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins who is the image of the invisible God he is the image of the invisible God that's why Jesus can say you see me you see the father the firstborn of every creature for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. There's lots of invisible things which are absolutely real. Next time you press the button on the microwave, do you see the microwave? Open it up, put your hand in for five minutes. These invisible things have power. But uh, he, by him, were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Amen. It's quite a lot of words, but they actually very deep and beautiful. Amen. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Amen. If he has the preeminence, we're going to be in harmony, in harmony. Not, not. Yeah, you see, sometimes people come into a a religious relationship with God. Oh, if I don't go to church, he won't be pleased. Or if I do this, so I better, I better do that. And 
Yeah, no, it, it's a love relationship. It's harmony. It's mm. not forced upon anyone. And if if we give him preeminence, he says, I love you. <laughs> you know, it's the Lord. He's not, now get up at six and, and spend two hours in prayer. You yeah, know, he, he doesn't force you into things. If you get up at six and pray for two hours, it's because you're so happy you can't stop. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. All fullness of God dwelt in Christ Jesus. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Amen. You know, it's so incredible. And then verse 21 says, And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind, by wicked works. Yet now has he reconciled. Yes. In the body of his flesh through death. To present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. It's the work of Christ. If ye continue in the faith grounded and settled. And be not moved away <laughs> from the hope of the gospel. Which ye have heard. And which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh, for his body's sake, which is the church. Whereof I am made a minister, according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you, to fulfill the word of God, even the, the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now made manifest to his saints. The mystery. What is the mystery? To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Praise God, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. That's so wonderful. Christ in you, the hope of glory. If Christ's in you, all things are possible. <laughs> so I just want to, uh, uh, I've got three more scriptures here. I said in, in Matthew 18, verse 19 in the Amplified Bible, it says, Again, I say to you that if two believers on earth agree, that is, are of one mind in harmony about anything that they ask within the will of God, okay, it's got to be in a word, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. You listen to this once more. Again, I say to you that if two believers, believers on earth agree that this are of one mind in harmony, about anything that they ask within the will of God, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. So let us be in harmony with God and each other. Pray for one another, the Bible says. Now in James 5, verse 16 and 17 says, Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. You know, that verse was uh, taken very literally by um, John Wesley. When, when he was preaching, they used to have these little home groups, they called them gangs or something, little home groups. And they came together daily 
confessing their sins and battles every day to one another and pray for one another. Then it says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias was a man subject to like passions, as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on earth by the space of three years and six months. Effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And in James 5, 13 to 15, it says, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he hath committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Isn't that wonderful? How healing and forgiveness of sin is in the same, same uh, um, uh, what is it, same sacrifice, you know, atonement. Now, as we, as we close, um, I know Brother Phil would like prayer. So anyone else who, who likes prayer and needs to be anointed with oil, can you come forward, please? Um, do, do, can I, uh, can yeah, I share? Feel, do, it'll, it'll, it'll go in with your feel free, feel free. Um, I'm so grateful for the body of Christ, aren't you? Amen. Some months ago, I, was, I traveled overseas and I got struck by a spirit of infirmity that uh, paralyzed me down half of my body so I hardly could walk and I knew what was happening and I knew how to receive healing I had been healed numerous times by the Lord and so I began to, to claim my, my healing simply not asking God Jesus said don't ask me for healing he said I've already done it claim it and I began to attack the enemy where I was in the uh, in the because I had no insurance, no doctors, no hospital. Because he said to me, "Do you trust me?" And this is where I have to walk now. Jesus is my healer. And um, <clears throat> so I came back home and I was fighting these lying symptoms. And I said to the Lord, "Well, I've been claiming one Peter two twenty four, which says." You know, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses and by his strife we were healed and so I already was healed and I knew I was in a fight of faith he said fight the good fight of faith lay hold on eternal life for unto we are called and have confessed a good confession before many witnesses and so I was just saying no I'm healed Amen. but there was a delay in manifestation and I said to the Lord what is the story here have you ever noticed that um Jesus had many ways in which he healed people. Mm -hmm. He never had one prescribed way. You know, one man he spat in some some clay and put it in a man's eyes and then said, Come on, off you go and wash. And so I said to the Lord, Well, <coughs> I've been claiming your word and your word is true, your word is good. And he said, Well, <coughs> I'd like you to go and ask Brother Albert to pray for you, according to James five, fourteen and fifteen where it says, if you're sick, call for the elders of the church and let them pray over you, anointing you with oil. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise them up. And the Lord said to me, have you noticed that you don't have to do anything except obey it? Obey it. And I said, I'm going to come here. He's speaking this today. He gets up and he says, you know that the Lord says his word will never pass away. It's true. And I felt the Lord saying, I'm wanting always to confirm my word. Amen. And for all of us, and I'm here today, 
But it's interesting, he should be preaching it. But this scripture is a manifestation where God says, you obey it, you go, you let the elders lay hands on you, anoint you with oil, and guess what? I'll do it. So I say to you, in obedience to God's word, I'm here. Amen. I just read it again. If, if any among you, is any among you afflicted, let him pray. Is any merry, let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And I've got some anointing oil here. We're going to anoint Brother Phil with oil in the name of the Lord. Amen. And we know the oil represents the Holy Ghost, right. the representation. Yeah, right. And let them, so I would like uh, some of the elders come and lay hands Amen. on him as well. Praise the Lord. Can I ask Brother Chris and Brother Kevin and Brother Green and Emerson and Joseph, we all lay hands on him, let them lay hands on him, if he could come forward. And we'll Thank you. praise God. And if you feel to pray as well, feel free. We'll just lay hands on our yeah. brother. And let's pray. Yeah. Uh, Heavenly Father, according to your will, according to your, to your word, yes, we Lord anoint Jesus. our brother with oil yep. and claim the healing you have already yes, accomplished Lord, on yeah. Calvary. We pray for complete healing yes. for our brother Phil. So we Lord. thank you that he is obedient to your word and that he is walking in it and manifesting it. And now I pray that the manifestation of Christ, of God himself, is in this for the glory of God. We ask it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. It's we do our part and God does very it. simple. <laughs> you know, it's like with baptism, it's as simple as can be. Repent. Yes, I have repented. And be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. No, I haven't done that. Well, why don't you? Oh, I, I believe it's the blood that saves, not the water. That's true. I believe he already healed me on Calvary. I don't need to go through this. No, but they are the words which reinforce the word and which we can walk in the word. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let's just sing a song uh, as we close. Um, by his word I have no fear in me. Do you know that one? Uh, Elf can play it. By his word I have no fear. You pick it up. Uh, it's very simple. In F it is there. By his word, I had no fear in me. By his word, sickness come well in me. By his word, I had no fear in me. Thank you. 
uh, come in the name of Jesus Christ. You said whatever you do in word or deed, do it in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, wh whenever we have failed you, I commit us all under the blood of Christ. I commit us all under the leadership of the Holy Ghost. Now pray, please. Speak to us, minister to us, guide and lead us in the coming days for the glory of God in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you all.